The 19th century was characterized by a significant rise in anti-Semitism, which manifested itself not only in popular sentiment, but also in the scholarly realm. This period saw the emergence of biblical criticism in Germany, an academic discipline deeply rooted in German intellectual tradition. Prefer and Greenitz famously described biblical criticism as decisively a German science, highlighting its nationalistic undertones. This era of intellectual anti-Semitism is exemplified by Emperor Wilhelm's reaction to de Litsch's lecture on Babel and Bible. His remarks about reducing the prestige of the Jewish people were not just a comment on 19th century Judaism, but reflected a broader condescending attitude towards the Jewish people throughout history. This sentiment was vividly illustrated in a German caricature published in Lustige Blatter on March 16, 1903, depicting two downtrodden Jews burdened with heavy loads in the snow, discussing the emperor's words. De Litsch's lectures did not merely oppose the Bible and Judaism, they also gave rise to a racist, nationalistic and theological outburst. He portrayed the Sumerian culture as non-Semitic and inserted anti-Semitic nuances by accusing Jewish and Armenian antiquities dealers in Baghdad of deceitful practices. His book The Great Deception explicitly expressed these anti-Semitic views. Moreover, the era's scholarship often sought to strip Israelite culture of its originality, attributing its achievements to other civilizations, such as the Hyksos, perceived as Indo-Europeans. Delitz's assertion that the Assyrians, represented by a blonde-haired Assyrian queen, was Semitic, sparked a debate about the racial origins of the German master race. This period also saw a problematic interpretation of Jesus Christ's origins, suggesting he was non-Semitic and inherited his humanism from Assyrians. This theory aimed to elevate the New Testament by attaching it to Aryan descent, thereby undermining its divine origin. Wellhausen's portrayal of early Second Temple Judaism is another instance of this era's anti-Semitism. He depicted Jews as a mercantile people, lacking in joy and shrouded in gloom, a description that echoes classic anti-Semitic stereotypes of the time. His critique of the Books of Chronicles revolved around an artificial revival of ancient relics, blending old and new elements. Wellhausen's criticism of the priestly source significantly influenced both critics of Judaism and anti-Semitic thinkers. He harbored a deep personal dislike for Jews, especially the form of Judaism that was taking shape during the Second Temple period. His use of the term Judenschule Jew school, in his writings on the book of Samuel, was a derogatory reference to Judaism, implying a stifling, oppressive nature. Research suggests that Wellhausen's intense dislike for Second Temple Judaism stemmed from his staunch monarchist views and rejection of contemporary social ideologies, which he integrated into his academic work. Burton, for instance, posited that Wellhausen's criticism of priestly and Pharisaic legalism was actually an indirect critique of the Protestant Church. In a letter dated March 5, 1893, Wellhausen acknowledged the ancient Jews' resilience against the Romans, albeit begrudgingly. He characterized Second Temple Judaism as dogmatic and coercive, with Pharisees depicted as hypocritical, showcasing his antipathy towards Judaism. Wellhausen's overtly anti-Semitic writings were later used by the anti-Semitic movement, exemplifying how scholarly work can be co-opted for hateful ideologies. The comparative historical research of the era, especially in Germany, was plagued by extremism. Babylonian texts were often regarded as superior to biblical texts, reflecting a distorted view of cultural and religious heritage. Philosophical literature of the time, critical of biblical values, frequently echoed these anti-Semitic sentiments. Many authors openly displayed vulgar anti-Semitism, further cementing the connection between academic criticism and racial prejudice. Historian TZVE Gratz criticized Wellhausen for his blatant anti-Semitism and lack of proficiency in Hebrew. By the 20th century, Israeli researchers began to recognize the political motivations behind many scientific explanations in biblical criticism. They started to see through the supposed objectivity of these theories, understanding their inherent biases. In summary, the 19th century's intellectual landscape was marred by a blend of anti-Semitism and scholarly pursuits, particularly in Germany. This period witnessed the birth of biblical criticism intertwined with nationalistic and racial ideologies. The scholarly work of this era was heavily influenced by the prevailing anti-Semitic sentiments, leading to biased interpretations and conclusions. 
This has led to a gradual shift in biblical studies, moving away from racially and politically charged theories towards a more nuanced and scholarly approach in contemporary times.